Hi, my name is Panji Pragiwaksono, and I would like to put sambal trasi in my immigrant chair. We are back with another fresh, hot out of the oven episode of Immigrant Jam, the podcast. I'm your host, Lucy Pohl. This is an amazing day. I'm so excited. We are traveling to Indonesia <laughs> because my guest today is the amazing stand-up comedian, YouTuber, author, radio broadcaster, rapper, and father, <laughs> Panji Pragiwaksono. Hello. It is, so, it is so good to be here. Thank you, Lucy, for having me. Thank, Thank you very you much. Thank you so much for being here. What do you want to put in your immigrant chair? Sambal trasi. It's oh, yeah, basically, yeah, it's hot sauce because because there's nothing spicy. We we're Indonesian. We like spicy food. Yeah, nothing is spicy here. Even your hot sauce isn't really that spicy. Really, it's oh, nothing. Shit. Even my my kids were like, "What is this?" <laughs> They're There's like, what nothing are these pussy in it. Americans? <laughs> <laughs> what about Mexican food? Is that or Indian food here? Yeah, is that spicy I think enough? I think generally food in New York doesn't have. Which is, I think maybe it's better, but it doesn't have the same flavor. Mm. Like if I eat, you, you have fried rice here in New York, but yeah. it's different with eating fried rice everywhere else, everywhere else in the world because it has less <laughs> yeah. spice here. I don't know if it's because it's a health thing or something, less yeah. salt or less whatever. Yeah, less cancer. Y yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. Less yeah. heart attacks. Yeah. Less high fructose <laughs> corn yeah. syrup. Is that a thing? You guys are so worried about your health. Well, yeah. look look at us. I, mean, I don't know why I'm including myself. I'm not even that American, but look at them. Yeah, yeah, well, that probably makes sense. But um, yeah, I miss my ver Indonesian version of hot sauce so much. So that's a, like a brand of hot sauce? No, it's you... like a type of hot sauce. So okay. there's a lot of type of hot sauce in Indonesia. Every, um, every place in Indonesia has their own hot sauce because oh. they're so, there's Indonesia so... It's a huge country. It's yeah. a, it's an archipelago. So every island has their own thing, and there's so many like hot thousands sauce. of islands. Yeah, seventeen thousand islands. Seven, yes, exactly. I read it. <laughs> so crazy. That's insane. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, do you use the same sort of like peppers that the rest of the world uses? But yours are just you just make it spicier, or do you have like special Indonesian? I'm not really sure because um, even every time I. <laughs> I, uh, my wife gets pissed all the time by me because every time I buy stuff, it's always shitty to her perspective. Like, <laughs> I brought a, I, I bought a table salt. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, we used it, and then she was like, "What is this? It's table salt. <laughs> There's nothing in it. It's not like the same table salt that we have in Indonesia. Everything here is like it's toned. It's the version of it. It's toned down. Even the uh, noodle, instant noodle ramens. It's different. It's it yeah. has different tastes. Well, we also have all these GMOs here. Do what you guys it? have that in like genetically modified organisms? I'm yeah, not organisms. sure. Like the, it's not real food. It's like, you know, made, it's chemicals. Why can't I, I talk don't know. anymore? Why am I talking <laughs> I, like that? I, it's chemicals. Maybe we do have it. I'm just too stupid enough to to notice, but I don't know. I don't, I've never heard of the term. Well, then you probably don't have it if you've not heard of it. Because here, yeah. if you go to the supermarket, you mm -hmm. got to look out. There, There's a little box mm -hmm. that's like got a blue background and then like a little cloud in it or a rainbow or something. Or what is the blue box? And it says non-GMO. Mm-hmm. And that and means so that means that there's no genetic so that, that it's not made of chemicals. Right. It's like supposed to be an actual thing. So if you see like an orange juice and it has that little box mm -hmm. with the little hill and mm -hmm. the blue sky, or which whatever, means it's healthier. It's, it's healthier. It's supposed to be healthier and I it's see. more expensive. It's more expensive. I so see. So those are the ones that are like right. four or five dollars more than everything else. They're yeah. the non-GMO. Yeah. And I have a friend who who will not touch anything GMO, and she says as soon as she eats GMOs, she just farts all day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, the body resists like, the chemicals. Okay. Um, but and, and tomatoes, for example, here, mm. yeah. they don't taste like anything, you right, know? Right. So, I, so I, I think that's totally true that everything's, like, toned down. Yeah, that's probably it. Yeah, that's so sad. I don't know. I'm not sure. I think it's... I, me and my wife thinks it's probably because it's healthier and people generally in in especially in New York I feel like they care a lot about their health like 
it's amazing to me. Everywhere I go, there's always a vegetarian version of something. Like we don't have that in Indonesia. If you go to a sushi place in New York, there's always a vegetarian menu. Yeah. Right. Um, it's not like that in Indonesia. I think vegetarian food is, is starting to come up, and the awareness of healthy food is just coming up. But vegetarian doesn't necessarily mean healthier. See, that's the thing. Like mm. vegans, for example, mm-hmm. a lot of vegans. I'm sorry, you <laughs> vegans who are very sensitive people. <laughs> um, also here in New York. Yes. Oh, okay. But they're not necessarily healthy. You know, because they're first of all, vegans are always hungry. So they're eating all day long. Am I right? Are you vegan? You're not vegan. <laughs> Sam is like, I'm, do it, not insult me. I'm 75% vegan. I'm me doing too. it for a health reason, um, not because I care Which about... Which means what? You don't eat a lot of meat and no cheese? Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't eat a lot of meat. Basically, yeah. I cut down yeah. a whole lot I, of it. I pretty much don't eat any meat. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's fine. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. like this like cashew cheese and stuff like that, I'm not sure that's healthier. You know, when you right. go to a vegan place, they bring you something that is like, is like uh, you know, like a uh, uh, soft scramble vegan breakfast burrito. Yeah, which basically m- mutant it. burritos. Yeah, it's a mutant burrito. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and nobody knows what's in it. And you're like, what is this? I don't know what I'm eating. And everybody's like, no, no, it's that healthy because it's vegan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Th- that makes sense. And yeah. Satan? What is that? That sounds like a nightmare. What was it? Satan. Satan? What is that? Exactly. That's what I want to know. <laughs> no, but in Indonesia, it, it has, there's a word, Satan. The what devil. Does it mean? The devil, yeah, here yeah. too. Satan. Sa- yeah. But this is Satan, Saitan, Zaitan. Do you know this thing? Yeah, it's a, it's a whey protein. It's made of protein. Oh, it's made oh. of whey protein? Yeah. Okay, oh, well, okay, Okay. whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Indonesian word for Satan is actually Setan, S-E-T-A-N. <gasps> Maybe it is the devil. <laughs> it's the devil. You vegans have all been eating the devil. <laughs> That's why I they're actually, so bitchy. They're so upset all the time. Exactly. Um, but we love you, vegans. If you're vegan, okay, go eat a carrot and calm down. We still love you. I love carrots, too. Carrots are great. Uh Speaking of this weird topic that we're on, not that weird, food, uh, Indonesia has the Guinness World Record holder for the largest packet of instant noodles. Did you know this? <laughs> Indonesian people are so obsessed with breaking records. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a lot of records that Indonesian, we are so obsessed with breaking records. There's like the Guinness Book of World Records but an Indonesian version of it. I love and everybody's that. just trying to make another. <laughs> At one time, there's, um, the, they broke the record for the most chocolate Santa Claus sculpture in Indonesia. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. They make a whole lot of uh, Santa Claus chocolate sculpture in different sizes. <laughs> And then at another time... Just um, to upset Germany. <laughs> Just for that. <laughs> yeah, we're so obsessed with, you know, having records. Indonesians are always obsessed with numbers. Like, if even in foods, like, um, everything is bigger here in New York, I feel like. Mm-hmm. Steaks are bigger. Burgers are bigger. Indonesian like food, but a huge amount of them. Not, not big in size, but oh. big in number. Like, oh. a lot of rice... A lot of, you know, we like lots of stuff. If you go to a Padang restaurant, which is a, a very, a very well famous uh, in Indonesia, you sit down and then you don't even have to open a menu. They gave you everything they have. <laughs> they put it on the table. I love that. Yeah, it's crazy. Everything they have, they put it on the table and then you pay only the thing that you eat. But no. they, they put everything on the table. I love that. It's crazy. <gasps> it's crazy. That's amazing. And it's, it's like far a, from healthy. It's like a classy, <laughs> but that's like a classy all-you-can-eat buffet. Kind of, but it doesn't like look that classy. It's an all-you-can-eat buffet with style. Yeah. Because you don't get up and like pfft, like take everything. They, they give it to you and you yeah. have it on your table. Wow. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> yeah. I have yeah. to go. That's yeah, it's crazy. crazy. It is crazy. But, um, Why yeah, do you think th- that is, that Indonesians are obsessed with numbers and quantities? I don't know. I think it's because everything is... Indonesia is a... We, we, we are not a country with so many seasons. Like, mm. we don't have winters, falls, and whatever. So, we don't have that. Okay, you don't have to brag. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying there's, there's, there's always... 
uh, where in European countries and in American countries, you have like limitation where you can, you know, um, uh, what's the word? That that. There's a there's a time frame where you can't do anything, mm. which is the winter, and yeah. you have to, you know, uh, make food and everything else, and just prepare for the winter. Indonesian ha don't have that, <laughs> so we we always, um, you know, make food all the time, and we, so we have so many so many foods. We have so many spices. So but many, I love the whatever. idea that Indonesians are like look at the rest of like America and something, and they're like those Americans. They just don't do anything in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have that time where you just don't do anything here. <laughs> Indonesians in in Indonesia, um, hunting is different. Like if you see in the U.S. or maybe in probably hunting in Africa, you have to like there's an effort to hunt for food. Mm. Indonesia, you know, animals are walking around hunting. Indonesia is just like. <laughs> You know, <laughs> you sit, you, you sit there chilling, and then a chicken passes by. Like, okay, this is my lunch right now. That that's basically for us Indonesian. Everything is so easy. That's why a lot of people think that Indonesian are lazy. We're we're not lazy. We just are not accustomed to work hard, which is different. I think. Is that you know? a stereotype that Indonesians are yeah, lazy? Yeah, yeah. Uh, people who are who are coming to Indonesia to work, like from other parts of the world. I mean, like if the if an American work goes to Indonesia to work one of the first impression that they have is indonesian people are lazy which is not the case we're not lazy we're just not accustomed to work hard because through generations and generations we really didn't have reasons to work hard yeah you, know you don't saying? even have to choose a food on the menu they just give you everything <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> you so that's basically it, it. Uh -huh. yeah yeah wow that's amazing so like growing up you just be like mom i want chicken for dinner and she'd go burp <laughs> <laughs> she just stick her hand out and grab a chicken no i'm Yo, kidding but that's no, yeah, so but, funny yeah even in jakarta which is like the new york of yeah. indonesia sometimes you'll be walking in jakarta and then chicken would be running around that's just the way it is. That's so nice. It's really funny. So now it makes sense that there's no vegans, though. Yeah, less vegan. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's crazy. It's really interesting. That's so funny. And you just moved to New York. I, I, I did, yeah. Like five minutes ago, basically. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, yeah, just recently. Was this like a lifelong dream of yours to move here, or how did that happen? Well, um, friends of mine, when they know I moved out, when they found out I moved out here to New York, they always say, but you've been always talking about that. You've mm -hmm. been always telling us how you wanted to move to New York, even before I wanted to be a stand-up comic. It's, it, it's always on my mind. When I was in college, a friend of mine was like, but I remember when we were in college, you said that you want to go to New York. I was like, I don't even remember I said that. And, and then I met stand-up comedy, and then I saw this video. Um, I've always had the idea, but never had the courage to actually do it. But then I saw, I don't know if you if you – if you've seen this or not, uh, Andrew Schultz has, has this video. It's uh, the title is four four one, where he did four sets mm -hmm. in four different clubs in one night. Mm -hmm. I saw it and I was like, "Oh my god, this is what I want." You're like, "Oh my god, I'm so much funnier than that <laughs> no, guy." No, <laughs> no, that is not what I'm saying. But the uh -huh. the thing that he was doing, you know, running around, yeah. going from clubs to mm -hmm. clubs. I was like, only New York City has this, right? And um, I've always loved stand-up more than whatever good things that come from stand-up, even more than money or whatever fame. Mm -hmm. I always love doing stand-up, and I always want to do as much stand-up as I can. And and then I decided 2017, I think, or maybe 2018, I decided let's start um, saving money for the dream. Mm -hmm. And then 2000, and this year, actually, we started doing it, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And have you have there been expectations that have been met or exceeded or stuff that you thought was going to be one way and is another way? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but um, we did a lot of research about how it is in New York. Um, Tom's video was <laughs> obviously uh, one of them, and I, I we were ready. I was ready. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know how tough it was going to be to make people laugh mm. here in New York. I, especially, I didn't know that during open mics there were no 
audience. No laughs. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. Durable they they were just comics. There was no reason to be alive anymore, <laughs> and no joy. <laughs> I, uh, during my first week, I started going back and forth since January this year. Yeah. And first time doing stand up, first week, I was like, "Where are the audience? Where?" There's just comics here, and most comics they don't laugh. Yeah. Maybe because they were thinking about their own jokes, or maybe mm. because you know, They're it's hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, wow, this is very, very, very tough. And then I realized, New Yorkers are generally—it's not that they're mean or they're snarky or whatever. It's just that I think, like, generally New Yorkers forget to smile. They don't smile a lot. New Yorkers don't smile a lot. Yeah. And I was like, it's very hard trying to make. People laugh when they don't even smile, <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, this is going to be the hustle. So let's do this. But yeah, That's everything funny. else, I kind of figure it out. Yeah, mm. yeah. I feel like what people don't understand about New Yorkers is that they're just trying not to get murdered, like yeah. every second of the day. I get it. Yeah, <laughs> you know? I get it. So it's like, but if you smile at them, they'll smile back. Smile back. No, Most they don't. Them. No, Th through my experiences. I just bought a coffee in this place. Mm -hmm. I was like, I was smiling. I was smiling all the way. I was like, have a great day. And it was like, nothing. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, fuck you. But I, but I get it. It's really, this is a crazy, crazy city. Everything is faster. Everything is tougher. And even when I'm from Indonesia, there's, there's this uh, notion that Indonesians who are living in New York are... Um, it's like they don't like to socialize because Indonesian people are are very socialized. Mm. They communal. like to socialize. Yeah, they're very mm -hmm. communal uh, in Philly, in L.A., uh, in San Francisco. And there are words that's that basically even Indonesian in New York, they don't hang out. Really? Yeah, they don't don't you know, not the community isn't that, you know, um, that solid. Yeah. And I, but, but being here, I realize why, because everybody's. They're working all the time. It's tough. Mm. Sometimes they have to have, uh, you know, two jobs, maybe three jobs. Right. And so I realize it's not that they don't want to, you know, socialize. It's just that living in the city is very, very tough. I get it. But you still love it, and you. Still... I don't love New York. No. <laughs> <laughs> but the dream is here, so this what, is where. Why don't you love it? Because of that reason? Because it's tough, and because people aren't communal and friend and I'm... friendly on the outside. Yeah, I'm a generally I'm a laid back kind of person. Uh huh. I walk slow. Okay, yeah, that's um, that's that's yeah. uh, that's, uh, <laughs> that's gonna a be a problem in New York. <laughs> yeah, I walk slow. Um, <laughs> it's a uh, but my wife really loves New York. She really, really loves New York. So yeah. when when I told her the idea of moving here, she loves it. But um, I don't really love New York, but I admire the grit and the hustle of the city. Mm. It is, it is a it's a, it's a, how do I say it? When you play games, you know, the harder it is, the more exciting it right. is for you. Yeah. So it's kind of like that feeling. The challenge. Yeah, it's yeah. challenging. But it, but it's temporary for you. What is? To be here, to live here. Like you don't think you're going to be here no, forever. I hope I can be here forever. Um, I'm just saying if I had to choose a city in the U.S., to live in, it's probably not going to be New York. Okay. But the dream is to be a New York comedian. Mm -hmm. I really love. There's this documentary Sein, Jerry Seinfeld has, The mm -hmm. Comedian. Yeah. I really love it. I I even love the soundtrack, The uh, Waters of March. Uh -huh. I really love that song, and so the dream is to be a New York comedian because, as far as I know, there is no Indonesian comic mm. in New York. No, I don't know. I yeah. I, I don't think there is, yeah, and yeah. you know, I always find all the all the immigrant <laughs> comics. But no, I've never heard of an yeah, Indonesian comic in, exactly. in New York. And that's why that's why um, I really want to be a New York comic. Mm -hmm. And everybody's been asking, what is the goal for mm -hmm. you to move to New York? Like, do you want to have a like a whatever Netflix special or to perform in Madison Square Garden? I was like, the goal is to be a comedian. You know, I I f I feel like the journey is enjoyable if it if there's milestones up ahead that i'm going to achieve i mean i'll be happy right but um just to wake up and can if when i can say you know i'm here in new york as a new york comic it's this is already the dream so you know i'm just living it right now that's amazing it's it's <laughs> so amazing how that's still like as much as this country now has like so many 
you know, kind of horrible and gross yeah. things happening, there's still, especially in New York, is still such a like so meaningful. I yeah. think to yeah. immigrants yeah. and to you know still like has that that dream is still so intact here. Yeah. As, of course, especially in the comedy world because yeah, there yeah. is nothing um, like it uh, yeah, yeah. around the world. I met comics from L.A., from Florida, going into New York because uh, chasing the same dream. Right. I was like, wow, this city is really amazing. Yeah, and we always laugh because, you know, uh, New York is so expensive and so, you know, grimy and gritty. And, you know, people say people are rough around the edges and mm -hmm. it's tough here. Yeah. But um, you know that how much shittier like Ohio and fucking <laughs> Wyoming and all those places have to be if everybody's leaving, right. you know, their like suburbs to <laughs> be here and fucking work their ass off. And, yeah. and I think that, I don't know if you feel like this too, um, there is this like air of freedom here that you don't feel anywhere. I've never been to Indonesia and yeah, I've yeah. never really been uh, further east than like Kuwait. So I don't really know wow. that part of the world that much, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. I know that nowhere that I've been, you feel this like sense of like freedom to yeah. just be who you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's exactly. like singular in New York. Yeah, it's it's one of the things that, I mean, everybody in Indonesia have this dream of going to New York or being in New York. New York is a really, right. yeah, Indonesian really want to be in New York. It's a thing. Yeah, it's not even America, right? It's yeah, New York. Yeah, it's New York. Yeah. Um, and we, and I know that, um, you know, there's a huge sense of freedom and, you know, that you can be whatever you want to be in New York. And even in Indonesia, there's a, a little bit of joke about how free the Americans are, is, um, there's a saying that there should be, it, beside the Statue of Liberty is the Statue of Responsibility because Indonesia <laughs> feel like there's so much too much freedom they feel like in in, <laughs> in the u.s that's but great. when i get here i i realize that that's what makes especially new york very interesting because you can be whatever even in mics right you can see everybody with their own identity everybody is trying to um express themselves and how different they are mm -hmm. i was amazed because there's not such a thing in indonesia i there was there will never be a day where I get to an open mic in Indonesia and then somebody would go on stage and say, I'm trans mm. or um, I'm queer or whatever. That's it's exciting for me. I was like, wow, they're being celebrated, celebrated being themselves. Because, it's just crazy. It's, it's but amazing. Because it, it wouldn't be because it's it's not, uh, but it's it's allowed in Indonesia. Right? No, it's not. Oh, it's not. Oh, I it's thought Indonesia not. was more open no. Than, than. No, oh. we are very uptight. Oh. We're a very uptight country. Okay, we can't even. So you wouldn't be allowed to say that. No, no. You. But go there's to jail? a lot of. Would you be arrested? What would happen? Go to jail. Yeah. You go to jail. Yeah. Oh, fuck. You're not even to do. You're not even allowed to do anal in Indonesia. You get a jail. <laughs> what? Yes. Being do people gay. People tell on each other. No. Like how do people? How do they find out? This I, is what I always was fascinated by. Like how do they like make this I, law and think that anybody's gonna I know. tell them? It's always stupid. Also for you know some of us in yeah. Indonesia, but sometimes they do this. <laughs> the word I'm going to use sounds weird, but they do this raid. An anal raid, <laughs> <laughs> like the police and the um um you know, you know people, you know doing raids to there's uh there's a thing in Indonesia called kosan which is basically like an apartment but a very cheap version of it, mm. and then the police would go raid kosans, uh, looking for anal, looking for gay people. Oh, looking for gay people, but but straight people can do. Are straight people allowed to do anal? Some of my friends. Hi. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, straight straight couple does that too. I'm I'm saying it's just that um there are laws that that li that prohibits you to do anal. But even if you're straight. Yeah, yeah, even okay. if you're straight, yeah. Okay, so so these anal raids, we're going to call them anal raids. Indonesian <laughs> anal raids. <laughs> <laughs> um, they are uh, focused on uh, targeted to gay people. Yes, okay. especially. So they yeah. turn a blind anus. Yeah. To the people. <laughs> you're not also you're also not allowed to live together when you're not married. 
What? Yeah. Holy there's a shit. there's an Indian word for it. It's called kumpal kobo. If you uh, the direct translation to it is uh uh the the <laughs> oh it's so stupid. Whore lady. No, kumpal kobo is a term in Indonesia in Indonesia to describe people living together even though they're not married. Mm-hmm. And kumpal kobo in English means the gathering of water buffaloes. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Aren't you happy to have me in this podcast yes. now? <laughs> but wait, why? Well, what are well, water buffaloes? Are water buffaloes like? Do they just fuck anything? What's the? Are they? I don't. Bad? I don't come up with the term, Lucy. So I don't know. I it, have to understand. I'm German. But, I must understand, rationalize this. But I think it's because there's water buffaloes are everywhere. Across Indonesia, yeah. From I read that from, there's a water buffalo festival where people dress up like them, in this like one. Yes, kind of, in this in a very specific um, province, region. Yeah. yeah, region right. in Indonesia. Yeah, but um, I think every time, every time the the uh, idea of water buffaloes being together in a puddle of mud mm. is very common in Indonesia. So every time ah. they see, you know. Couples living together, even though they're not married, they say it's kumbul kobo, the gathering of water buffalo. Because so it's like vermin a little bit. It's like like yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. here rats. Yeah, yes. it's like like yeah, like Ugh. pigs and shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pigs yeah. and shit, kind of like that. I think that's kind of the American version. Yeah. No, pigs and shit are happy people, right, Sam? Like yeah. pigs and shit means happy <laughs> people. Yeah, yeah, they're also happy living together, not. You know, being married. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's probably why they're yeah. so mad at them because they're happier than the married couples. <laughs> yeah. I think who, whoever made that term and made that law are, are married people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Very. Uh, uh, Angry, mean, married people. Wow, yeah. that's fucking crazy. I didn't realize that for some reason. Why did I think that Indonesia was like more open than like well, because Singapore? Everybody knows is mm-hmm. so strict so then i'm guessing also drugs and stuff are off the table yes definitely um well if you compare indonesia with malaysia or maybe singapore we are right yeah even even the comedy scene is different and people comics who come from malaysia if they come to indonesia they're like wow you guys have so much freedom but Uh indonesia has 280 million people and 90 Probably eighty nine percent, eighty eight percent of them are Muslim, uh-huh, and okay. the conservatives are, you know, very uptight. Right. They're very strict, right. and so yeah, that has an effect on how we live our lives and we make our laws. Of course, yeah, yeah. So then there's even more. You can understand even more that people dream of coming to New York or America yeah, yeah. to be free to say and do whatever they want. Would you get in trouble for talking, making? Uh, like uh, um, saying a joke on stage about gay people. Oh, or definitely. Yeah, yeah. You, 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 you're not. Allowed you're to not even allowed to cross sure. dress on TV. Being a straight person, not like you're queer or anything. You're a straight person, but for whatever sketch or something, you have to wear, you know, a girl's dress. Uh-huh. You're not allowed to do that on TV, which is ah. kind of sad because it wasn't like that back in the days, like in the '80s or probably in the '90s. It wasn't like that. Huh. But Conservatism is rising yeah. in Indonesia because everywhere actually. Yeah, uh, uh, Indonesia especially because before ninety eight, we were under this regime where everybody is allowed to show their colors. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have an oppressive government uh, prior to ninety eight. We have a president running the nation for three thirty two years, mm-hmm. um, and then afterwards. Uh, democracy is really showing its color and everybody else is more allowed to be themselves. And that um, has something to do with the rise of conservatism on the right side. But also, you know, gay people and trans people are also on the rise Mm -hmm. afterwards because everybody is now feeling like they can be themselves. And that's that's what happened. The rise of conservatism in Indonesia is pretty rampant. Yeah. Mm. That's so sad. So, yeah. um, because I heard in, in Malaysia there was a comic that was arrested. Yes. Right. Yeah, um, yeah. I actually had him on my on the uh, on the Twitch show that I used to do. He owned a club. Yes. And a girl did an open mic, right? And and like yeah. 
stripped or something she like was that. yeah um i don't know if the malaysian uh comic told you this but that girl wasn't even a comic she right. was just yeah what what's the word attention whore was it yeah, <laughs> yeah. she right. was just she's yeah. i don't know what's Our wrong Kardashian. with that we call <laughs> <Kardashians>. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah but um yeah it's there it's rough over and there. they closed his club for a while right and arrested him like but he went to jail for a while still no, no. i don't think he's in jail anymore but yeah, yeah, i know yeah. they closed the club and arrested them yeah yeah it was crazy does that though give you like do you have a sense of wanting to uh, do you have a sense of like also representing your country now oh. that you're here and wanting to you know um like lead the way for other indonesians and it's do you know what i mean because yeah. i think some people are like no i'm just indonesian or i'm just from this place and i don't represent anybody but myself yeah. and then other people feel like a sense of i think I'm, responsibility yeah i'm i'm all of those i do have my this is just my personal my 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 own dream so it's like a selfish thing it's not even my kids dream to be in new york <laughs> um but at the same time i do know my place in the indonesian stand-up comedy scene mm. where every achievement i make is an opportunity for everybody else mm -hmm. so i do have a sense of um wanting to to represent or push the envelope right yeah for for, for indonesian but apart from that, I've always liked to talk about Indonesia. I've always liked to talk about Indonesia. Every there were moments prior to to the pandemic, um, I actually get gigs where I get to be like a guide for whatever football star coming from the UK or um, YouTuber from whatever countries. If they want to, um, if they want to find someone who can tell something about Indonesia, they hire me. Uh. To oh, tell cool. them about Indonesia, yeah, I've always liked to talk about Indonesia, and so I feel like, especially moving here, not this is my opportunity to tell more about Indonesia. This is why I like this podcast. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I really like uh, the the whatever chance I have to talk about Indonesia. I really, it's it's kind of like my thing. I love that, and th that's exactly. I mean, I guess that's exactly why I do the podcast too, because I feel like. Not only, you know, people know things or have heard things or have their, like, you know, image in their head of what mm -hmm. they think Indonesia is mm -hmm. or what a country is like. But I feel like if you've heard one person from every country in the world mm -hmm. talk about their experience mm -hmm. and and have listened to someone from the country then you feel like you've you have a, you feel an emotional connection mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. and nothing is scary or foreign to you anymore yeah. do you know what i mean yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um and so yeah I, I i was saying to you before we started the podcast that i went to this international school and growing up just around kids from from all different countries on mm -hmm. earth mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it like i took for granted what that did for me so like when we moved here i was eight and i didn't want to move here mm -hmm. i'm guessing your kids also didn't want to move here <laughs> yeah they didn't want to leave their friends yes so, yes yeah. yeah but i'm going to say that later in life they're going to look back and be really grateful yeah, that uh, they were exposed yeah you that's know, what i hope yeah to... especially my daughter for my daughter is very tough because she has a uh, she her best friend is she's very close with her best friend and it's tough for her moving here she's still even like you know um video calls mm -hmm. with her friends back in indonesia for my son it's tough because he knows um about school shootings and mm. um hate asian crime mm -hmm. um and so he was worried about that but now this is their third week i guess uh, in school uh so far so good and my kids are already more what's the word when they can do things by themselves what's the word independent yeah they're... <laughs> <laughs> sorry my indonesian people sometimes words are not there they're more independent here in new york of course yeah because from the day from the first time they went to school even preschool they always have somebody taking them to school mm -hmm. with a car. Right. And here, my son takes the bus by himself, and he's 
he's happy with he f- he feels like a sense of uh, an achievement for you know being independent and my my daughter doesn't want me to walk with her to school because she <laughs> yeah. thinks she can do it by herself and so yeah i feel like um not i don't i don't think we have to wait long to to have that sense of you know that being in new york is good for them also yeah. they're going to love being in the city yeah Yeah, I think I think that that's it's so true like growing up here I always took that for granted too mm-hmm. that you know just like being able to leave the apartment or leave the house and go wherever and meet up with your friends and not have your parents drive you somewhere and mm-hmm. feel that's so important especially in that age like adolescence to yes. teenage years and being able to like learn from experiencing the city and people and yeah so and, and I think that If it's possible for parents to give their kids the experience of moving to another country mm-hmm. when they're kids, mm-hmm. everybody should like grab that opportunity because I think that that is also such an important experience yeah, to yeah. like have to find your way and you know kind of communicate in, in another language yeah. and it really like opens your mind. Yeah, yeah, I agree. You know? uh, my kids their life was basically since the day they were born up to the time we have to move to new york is basically nothing is there's no change whatsoever mm. they live in the very same house mm-hmm. they go to the same school everything is just the same and so even though it was kind of selfish for me to bring them here but i felt like i hope that learning to adapt is something that's very very um useful for them the yeah. the the ability to adapt and yeah. moving to new york it's a huge thing for them they need to change they need to adapt and um i just hope they they become a you know a more independent stronger person because of this move to new york oh yeah they're yeah, going to be they're going to stop smiling in no time <laughs> 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 don't you worry <laughs> You're like, oh no, what have I done? <laughs> I even have a joke in 2012. I have this joke, and people gave me a hard time about my own joke. But in 2012, the joke is about school shootings because there's always school shootings. Because they're shootings. hilarious. Let's be real, people. Come on. <laughs> but the joke was, um, the U.S. has this the highest number of school shootings in the whole world. So if your parents sent you to the U.S. to go to school, don't be happy about it. You better ask yourself, what did you? do wrong yeah. that was a joke that was 2012 and now i'm bringing my kids to school and you're getting everybody giving a hard time about my joke in 2012 but i was but at, yeah um i feel like the kids are already happy being here what about you though how do you feel being an immigrant for the first time in your life what does that feel like now? it's so weird because back in the the back in indonesia i am a triple majority Mm. I'm a male, a Muslim, and I come from one of the most dominant, um, uh, not race, um, tribe, I think, mm-hmm. which is the Javanese people. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Javanese people is very dominant in Indonesia. All of Indonesia's president is from the Javanese ah, the people. Okay, And so I'm very used to being part of the majority. Mm-hmm. Moving here to New York, I have nobody. Um, there's not a lot of Muslim Uh, I meet and really yeah oh. uh, I mean compared to being in Indonesia right. everybody's Muslim basically yeah. yeah and there's so little Indonesian there are only 6,000 Indonesian in New York City really yeah that's not a lot of number what do you know what city in the US has the most is it like San Francisco I or? think it's either Philadelphia oh. or Los Angeles okay it's between right. those two yeah Um. but yeah so there's not not there's no you know how chinese people they live together and there's mm-hmm. something called chinatown or little india mm-hmm. we don't have that uh, indonesians don't live together they most of them live in elmhurst but not to uh, not so much that we can say this is a you little, know, indonesia. Little, little indonesia right. indonesia town that's true yeah. Uh, yeah no you're right and uh and now thinking back uh i know one indonesian american oh really girl and that's oh. it Yeah, and yeah, usually, yeah. you know, I would have like because I went to the international school, I would have known at least I don't know ten yeah, yeah. or something. But Even in true. my kids' school, um, when I when I uh, brought my kids to the school to uh, sub, to register, I saw a lot of Asian kids speaking in their 
country's language, mm-hmm. and there's always a teacher who speaks their language. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like somebody speaks in 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 Chinese, and then there's a yeah. teacher who speaks Chinese, Korean, or whatever. Yeah. Nobody speaks Indonesian in every school. I remember um, when you when you register your kid to school, they have to make sure that all of your um, vaccines. Yeah, vaccines mm-hmm. are complete. Yep. And then I showed them like the doctor book or whatever. The little vaccine passport. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. And then she had to make a phone call to whatever. And then does anybody there speak Indonesian? And she can't find any. Wow. <laughs> and that's how. You stump New Yorkers <laughs> on language? That's crazy. No, because that's true. They have like every language yeah. in the book. Wow. Yeah. So, you know. Talk, you know, talking about representation, it's there's right. not a lot of Indonesian representation. So, what does that feel like? Is that sad to you? Does that make you sad, or do you not care at this point? I feel like there's a sense of responsibility to kind of to explain or show people, especially in New York, what is Indonesian. Um, they mostly they know more Bali than right. Indonesia. Of course, yeah. Yeah, because you know a lot of people surf and yeah. white women do yoga there or whatever. And people love beads. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's a sense of responsibilities. Um, but at the same time, Indonesian secretly probably are happy with the fact there's not a lot of other Indonesian uh-huh. in New York. Because to to Indonesian people, being in New York is some sort of an accomplishment. Uh-huh, you know, okay. like uh, there's being in New special. York. Special. Yeah, yeah, you're proud of yourself for, for, for being in New York. That's right. why when an Indonesian hears someone else speaking Indonesian, they don't walk to them and, oh, hi, you're from Indonesia. But Indonesian people, are, oh, fuck another Indonesian. Then they walk away <laughs> because, because, because you know, when you're, when you're here in New York, you feel like, oh, I'm very special. I'm proud of myself. I'm here. And then another Indonesian come up. Oh, fuck, I'm not, I'm not that special so anymore. Fu- that's so funny because Germans do that. Oh, really? And Germans, <laughs> growing up, my dad, if we were on the subway here and there'd be people speaking German, he'd, he'd literally go, pss, 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 Deutsches and Deutsche. Pss, 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 pss. And we'd all have to be quiet and like pretend re- we're yeah. not German. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But Germans obviously aren't very proud of being German uh, in general <laughs> anymore. Um, so that's why. Ah, oh, that's so interesting. Yeah. So you said you feel a sense of responsibility to teach and show people what's Indonesian. So what's Indonesian? Well, Indonesia is a very, it's a huge country. I think the size of Indonesia, the the width of it is similar to the size of continental America. Mm. 3,000 miles? I don't know. <laughs> 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 but the difference is we are, you know, scattered around in yeah. different islands, the largest archipelago. And so one of the things that people are confused about is what, does Indonesian people look like? Mm. Because I thought Indonesian people look like you, but this this guy, he looks like Chinese, but you said he's Indonesian? Yeah, he is Indonesian. And then uh, um, there are people from Indonesia that like the indigenous people in Mm. Australia. Mm -hmm. It's the same race. Mm. And so sometimes uh, I have a friend from Papua, Mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, the east, the very east of Indonesia. And then people will say, you're from Indonesia. My Indonesian friend doesn't look like that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's because Indonesia is very big and we're so diverse. Mm-hmm. And every island has their own language. Every island has their own traditional song, traditional dance. Everything is so different. Like you can just three hours um, drive somewhere, different culture. And mm-hmm. so at, at one in this side, it's like a, it's a beautiful thing, but also what makes us great is also the thing that gave us so much problem. Mm-hmm. Like we're so big, um, it's really hard to unite a nation mm. when you think differently. We speak, you know how languages have something to do with the way you think. Yes, and because Sorry. everybody, because <laughs> <laughs> I always say yeah. that. Yeah, everybody speaks their own language, <laughs> and that's why everybody thinks has different mentality. Yeah, and yeah. the way they think differently, and yeah. try to unite all of that under right. one nation. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, I think Indonesia is a country still trying to figure out ourselves mm. because we're so, we're so there's all, there's a lot of tra- traditional tribe that doesn't even know the country exists huh. because they were so, uh, what's the word? Um, remote. Yeah, they're so remote. 
Um, some a friend of mine asked me that's how. That's like here in <laughs> Texas. <laughs> <laughs> some yep. some some of my friend asked me how do you unite a nation so big, and my answer is we didn't we don't really unite mm. the whole country. We still have a problem. We still fight it amongst each other. Some you know tribesmen don't don't even know the existence of the the government or the country. It's mm. it's so weird. It's so hard. Lucky them. <laughs> oh my god imagine not knowing a government exists that sounds amazing huh? well who are you mad at ever yeah during your day their parents probably <laughs> yeah, <Their own> parents. <laughs> exactly. uh, yeah this so great. the way i describe it on is just so it's so diverse mm. it's it's crazy okay speaking of mentality and all that uh, I love sayings, proverbs, expressions from mm -hmm. countries because of exactly that reason. I always think they say a lot about the mentality of mm -hmm. the people. Mm -hmm. um, and I found some Indonesian sayings mm -hmm. that I thought were funny. I don't know if they're used or if you know them or mm -hmm. if you have one that you love. Mm -hmm. But um, one is apparently in Indonesia, you don't say someone's two-faced. You say that they're a sheep with makeup on. Come, come being the bedaking, <laughs> kambing the bedaking. Oh yeah, well that's yeah, 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 yeah. But um, that's actually, um, yeah, uh, that is a that is a saying that's recently being used. Oh, that's like a slang. Yeah, it's like a new thing. Kambing the bedaking. Yeah, it's a new thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Compared to a lot of you know like proverbs or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so but it's not like an old one. Yeah, it's not like an old. But it is. Oh, okay. It is. Is that it what is. the cool kids say? The Gen Z? <laughs> I kambing guess so, yeah. Kambing dapidaking. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Kaya kambing dapidaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like a goat being put on makeups. Uh, yeah, yeah. But that's okay for the government? Goat? Goats can cross dress. <laughs> They're like, we're fine with the goat cross dressing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is I true. also found that there's. Uh, <laughs> Okay, this says Indonesians may appear peculiar to you if you consider that they are so curious about things that uh, that this has actually turned into a psychological disorder called kepo. Oh yeah, kepo. And don't ever underestimate the people's stalking skills if they are hell bent kepo. on getting some information out of you. What yes. kepo? Kepo yeah. is a psychological disorder of being too curious. Yes, that's probably the best way to describe it. Yeah. Wow. Indonesians are always curious about you, basically. Mm. They always want to know. If if there's a celebrity in Indonesia, you type, like, for for example, let's say Lucy Paul is a celebrity in Indonesia. If you type your name on Google, the first search result is, what is Lucy Paul's religion? Oh. Every oh. Indonesian celebrity, everybody else in Indonesia wants to know what is his or her religion? It's a thing. Like, we always want to know more about this person. Mm -hmm. And kepo is a word to describe it. I don't even know where that came from. I don't even know if it's, I don't know, kepo, where, where kepo came from. But the word kepo is used a lot to describe how Indonesians always want to know something. Also regarding that things that they don't. They don't have to know, mm. or they shouldn't know, mm -hmm. but they want to know. Like, how anyway. much anal have you done? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, um, kepo is a thing. It's a huge thing. Then it says, Indonesians don't have beauty marks. They have fly poos. Oh, you have a fly yeah. poo, tahi lalat. Yes. Birthmarks in Indonesia is called tahi lalat. Fly poo. Fly poo. So yeah. birthmarks aren't a good thing, I'm guessing. Or is fly poo a good thing? Um, <laughs> there, uh, back in the days, it was um, what's the word frowned upon having yeah. uh, fly, poo on or fly poos on your face. But now I don't know because things are different now culturally. You know, um, it's considered cute. Depends on where it is. I think, oh, yeah, where the fly poop is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah, I have a bunch more. Mm -hmm. Um, give it to me. Okay. I like it. I like this. I like uh. No matter how high a squirrel jumps, it will eventually <laughs> fall. Sependai pandai. Okay, I'm not going to say Oh, that. my God. This is so cool. This is why I love this podcast. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, this is the term. Sependai pandainya tupai melompat, akhirnya jatuh juga. Which is to describe no matter how smart a squirrel jumps, it will eventually at some point fall. Wow. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a phrase to describe that you'll make mistakes eventually. So just be aware. 
no matter how smart you are or how famous you are, there will always a moment where, you know, shit happens to you. And that's interesting because that says something about the like humbling about the importance of being yeah, being humble. humble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, it's do you have a lot people. of squirrels in no, Indonesia? No, no, no. There's not no, a lot of squirrels. Because I was like, the thinking, why don't we have that? There's squirrels <laughs> everywhere. Nobody talks about, nobody has any squirrel that proverbs makes, yeah, here. That's, that's, I've never heard a squirrel proverb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Interesting. The, I, squirrels, are, squirrels are the thing that I find fascinating when I move here to New York because mm -hmm. they're everywhere, especially in Queens. <laughs> I was like, wow. I used to, because I'm, a, I'm I have this tourist way of looking at things. Yeah. When I first got here, I was like fascinated with squirrels because they're cute. Now I think they're just basically rats. Yeah. With better tails. Right. Yeah. That's how so, we see them yeah. here. And I had the this is this must be an immigrant thing because I went through the same exact process yeah, yeah. of like being like squirrels. I mean, I was a kid too, but I was so excited. And yeah. then I was like, ugh, get the fuck away from me. <laughs> <laughs> I think like every country has their own I don't know if this is the right word for it, but it's like Every country has their own thug animals. Yeah. Like in Australia, being Indonesian, oh, kangaroos are cute. Mm. But for Australian, kangaroos are are shitty animals yeah. because they they you know they infest your, right. your lawn. They shit everywhere. They yeah. they went into your trash. You know. Yeah. Just like if people come to Indonesia, they will see a lot of cats, and they'll be like. Oh, so many cats. This is so cute. But cats are just assholes in <laughs> Indonesia. That's like the, the Germans with the Jews. <laughs> uh, every country has their animal that they just can't stand. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Um, Panji, uh, we have come uh, near the end of this beautiful time together. I could mm -hmm. talk to you for hours, but it is very important that we now do something that I call... The poll questionnaire. Okay. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Exciting. Have you heard of the Proust questionnaire? No. Perfect. Um, empty your mind. Okay. You can do no wrong. Okay. If you see a chicken, you can grab it. No, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's time for the poll questionnaire. Uh, whatever comes to mind, no wrong answers. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Yes, Anji, I am. Yes, I am. Paragi Waxono. Okay. If you were the president of the United States of America, what American food would you ban? Wow. <laughs> um, I'm trying to figure out the word. Um, 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 bagels. <gasps> what? No! I don't understand with bagels. I know it's a New York thing. I know. I understand New Yorkers. I understand. I know. I just don't understand the, the fuss about it. It's too thick and too big and I'm has sorry, no taste. Sorry, I have to go. <laughs> <laughs> Shut it off. I don't understand. I don't understand the fascination uh, with bagels. Oh. I love everything else. Everything else, I love it. Oh, there's so much gross food you could ban. Bagels are the only reason we're still alive I, I in don't this know. country. I, I, I don't understand why it's always everywhere. Like there's always bagel. I, I bought good. a toaster yesterday, and it has put a bagel in it. Bagel. I was like. Yeah. Why is bagel so important? It has a specific <laughs> category on a, on a toaster. I was like, what's That's so funny. special about this? That's a bit. That's yeah. funny. The, the bagel. You. The yeah. bagel. Slot. I don't understand. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, I think it's my mission now to convert you to a <laughs> bagel lover. I don't know how Sam feels. I tried. No, I tried. I tried. I tried eating bagels. Well, you just... know, it's like a big Jewish thing, right? Oh, I, I don't know. I didn't yeah. know. I yeah, didn't it's know. a very, 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 oh, I see. very big yeah, we'll oh. we'll get you there. Okay. We'll get you there. Okay. okay, that's fine. I'm recovering. It's okay. Everything's going to be fine. <laughs> uh, luckily, immigrants can't be president. <laughs> and that's why, people. That's why. Really? Is that is that the law here? Yeah. yeah. You have to have been born in the U.S. Oh, oh okay. You can't be a naturalized citizen. You have okay. to be, have been born here. Okay, okay. Um, Except if you're Obama. <laughs> no, <I'm kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was an issue. Obama was born in Kenya or something, right? No, he wasn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Trump kept saying that. Yeah. Okay, um, Panji, if you had to come up with a catchphrase for America, what would the catchphrase be? Wow. <laughs> wow. A catchphrase? Mm hmm Wow was a good catchphrase. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. This is a I don't know if this this is considered as a catchphrase. 
but it's it's thought <laughs> that is the guy that that's the way indonesian express frustration oh yeah <laughs> okay thought, I love which it. is the short version from the actual word which is ngen thought which means fuck but it's the this is the shortest version of it thought Thought. Which sounds funny okay, in the it. ears of American, right? Thought. thought. Like in Indonesia, in Indonesia, if you're upset with something, thought. That's how you do it. <laughs> if you see something, thought. That's how you do it. So I'm giving it to you, American. You can use that. This should be the no, new, what's that thing? <laughs> D- bing bong. Remember bing bong? <laughs> bing bong. Instead of bing bong, it's thought. It's thought. Yeah. I love it. Okay, yeah. great, great. Two more questions. Mm-hmm. Um, if you had to deport one American person, who would you deport? Deport meaning move them from an uh, expel them from the country. Deport means you get taken away and you can't come back. One American? <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait! Wow, wow. So this should be a person I don't like. I don't know. I mean, we've had so many different answers here. Weirdly, uh, the most given answer is not Donald Trump. It's actually Michael Rappaport. Oh, I know him. Yeah, he's very that he's a he's a character. Him. But you know, one person uh, said Nancy Pelosi. So we have all kinds of people on this podcast. Okay, okay? so I want to <laughs> deport. Uh, you could say your landlord. See, I'm I'm surprised nobody. No, has my said landlord, their landlord is nice. Okay, she's very nice. She's she's an awesome Chinese lady. I love you, my landlord. <laughs> your landlord listens to this. I podcast. want to deport this crazy person I keep meeting on the seven train. <gasps> yeah, because it's kind of his. I don't know. He's he's scary. I'm from Indonesia, right? There's not a lot of aggressive mm. homeless person mm-hmm. in the u.s there's a lot of them especially in manhattan mm. and my kids are scared i'm scared like they're way bigger than me mm-hmm. and so, so wait are the homeless people in indonesia just nice like like tranquil the difference between homeless people in indonesia and homeless people in the u.s in indonesia homeless people will come up to you and ask for money but in the way like oh please give me money you know oh. like there's you know that in the u.s they'd be like yo can you give me a change man can you mm-hmm. in some way they come to you and they it's 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 yeah. I, we're not accustomed to that yeah, it's yeah, very no, aggressive it looking. is yeah it's um yeah it's what is the word uh they uh, fuck uh abrasive yeah yeah but i know saying that out loud makes me sound like i'm not um i'm not Empathetical, yeah, emphatic, yeah. empathetical towards them, yeah, yeah. But you have to know, I come from Jakarta, Indonesia. To us, it's really, it's scary. It is. Yeah, scary. no, it's scary to us too. And sometimes, it's... um, I I read I read news. Um, it's not really an Asian hate crime, but some some of these people they push Asian people. Yeah. Uh, you know, to the platform. Oh yeah, there's been a lot of Asian hate crimes from. I mean, yeah. they're crazy people. Yeah, That's they're crazy. The sad thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's not really be... hate. It's because something's wrong with them. Right. But it's still, it's still scary. I. Yeah. I'm a grown up. I'm 43 years old, and if I sit on an empty subway train, and a homeless person comes in, I'm so scared. I move yeah. to the next train. That's healthy. Don't ever lose that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, seriously. That, and that's why people don't smile here. <laughs> I mean, that's just the truth, you know. Okay, yeah. last question, most important question. The reason why I actually do this podcast, mm-hmm. um, Panji, do you know how I can meet David Hasselhoff? <laughs> <laughs> I think he's famous in Germany, right? Yeah. Probably you meet him walking around in Berlin. <laughs> Go back? Yeah. Go back to he's, Germany. <laughs> he's probably there wearing his whatever unbuttoned shirt he has at that time. <laughs> okay. But, um, it's it it's either that or maybe at um, what, Rockaway Beach is it? <laughs> yeah, find him at a beach. I love that you think you would be at Rockaway Beach. <laughs> that is so funny. Yeah, it's probably at a beach somewhere. 
<laughs> that fucking crazy homeless guy, David Hasselhoff, <laughs> roaming around Rockaway Beach. Panji Pragi Waxono, where can people find you online? Um, you can go to my Instagram. It's Panji Waxono, which is basically my name. I also have a YouTube channel under the same name. Uh, on Twitter, my name is Panji. It's P A N D J I. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm at those places. Or if you um, want to follow my me doing stand up um you can also follow stand up pindo dot nyc stand up is is s t a n d i n d o stand up pindo s t a n d u p i n d o dot nyc stand up pindo dot nyc stand up indo dot nyc follow yeah. panji check out everything he does send him a uh, beautiful pictures of your chickens i don't know please don't do that <laughs> uh go to all his gigs um thank you for listening to this episode thank you to douchebag steve the best patron in the world thank you to sam yeah, yeah. give it up for sam <laughs> please give this little podcast a five star rating if you love it review it share it with a friend if you hate it share it with an enemy uh thank you so much i'm your host lucy paul and we'll see you soon. Goodbye. If you like what you just heard, don't forget to rate, review, subscribe, recommend to all your friends, and if you hated it, recommend it to your enemies. Thank you for listening to Immigrant Jam, the podcast with me, Lucy Pohl. Have a delicious and nutritious day.